So I guess you can say that I stole a cop car. I have a thing for police cars, and I, I think that stems from the movie The Blues Brothers, because in the movie they've got this ex-police car, 1974 Dodge Monaco, and it seems to have like these magical powers to just do anything, elude other police cars and everything else. So that's something that's always stuck with me. My favorite cop car growing up always was the 94 to 96. 9C1 Chevy Caprice. This had the new LT1 engine. It had great handling and everything for the day. And every police officer who's old enough to have had one of those in service always said that that was their favorite car uh, as far as performance goes because the Crown Vic and stuff that came out afterwards was kind of lackluster in the performance department. When Chevy announced that they're going to be building a police only Caprice in 2011. It's uh, it's actually an Australian-built Holden that was only brought here as a police car, and that's the 2011 through 2017 Chevy Caprice PPV. So it's a great platform. At least on paper, it sounded fantastic. It has a six-liter LS V8. It's got a six-speed automatic transmission, a posi rear end. It's built off of the Pontiac G8 chassis, only it's stretched 3.8 inches in the back to allow for a cage and extra room for the prisoners, convicts, and hoodlums that go in the back. So I was immediately very interested in picking one up when they start becoming decommissioned. So I don't know all the ins and outs of all the different Holden chassis like Travis Bell does. He, he is the master nerd of knowing all these things. He's got his Ute, he's got his Chevy SS, and he's got all these things. But what I do know is when I first got my 2011 Caprice PPV in 2013, my very first one, it did not disappoint. It was, it was fast, it handled well, it, it, was, it had great brakes. Everything about it was as good as it looked on paper. Now, I didn't have much time with that car. Uh, things were getting messy in my life with my elderly aunt and my dad and leaving AMS. So I had to let the car go. I never got to modify it or anything until in 2019, I got back in the Caprice PPV game. So my goal was to build the ultimate police car that Chevy could have built using all GM parts. So I set out and I found a 2013 Caprice PPV down in Kansas. And it was one of these that you rarely find poorly listed bad pictures, but I noticed that the car had carpet, which is kind of strange for one of these PPVs. They all have the, the rubber floor matting. So I, I called them and it was a actually a police upfitter. The car had never been in service, which is like the holy grail of police cars because when you buy a used police car, I mean, these things are usually beat up pretty bad. So this was like, I thought this is the, this is the one. So I went down there, I grabbed it, uh, brought it back. So my plan was to put an LSA blower on the car from a Z06 or a ZL1 Camaro to kind of boost the performance. And that's an off-the-shelf part that I figured that they could use. So I secured a blower. I decided the only parts that I would, I had to put on when I'm doing this build is I put a slight stealth cam in it from Speed Inc. and headers. But other than that, the car was going to be all factory GM parts. Sourced some Brembo brakes from a Camaro SS, did some research. It's a kind of a hodgepodge of Camaro SS and CTSV parts. You can actually fit the Brembo brakes underneath the factory steel wheels, which was key to me. So as I'm doing research, collecting parts, and kind of making a game plan for this car, we start taking it apart. We get the blower mounted on the car, and that's when I had a change of heart on what I wanted to do. So the early versions of the Caprice PPV, the 2011 through 2013, have this kind of like antiquated interior that looks like it's from like a 2005. In 2014, they actually updated it and made, it make, looks like a modern vehicle inside. It's a huge difference. No difference really on the outside of the car, but the interior is a huge upgrade. So I decided, once again, what I always do is I start on a project. I'll end up buying two or three versions before I find the exact platform I want. So kind of mid-build, I decided, well, I think I want to find a newer vehicle. So I always on this site, Chicago Motors, my buddies Abdul and Ted over there, I have bought probably 10 police cars from them in the past, and they had this 2015 with 17,000 miles, but it had a blown motor. 
So my immediate thought is like, well, I mean, shouldn't this be under warranty? I mean, you, you would think. So I looked up the Vina and it turned out the car was like four months prior to being sold at auction was at the dealership. So I kind of figured, well, there must be some reason this thing's flagged. I went over and looked at it and the car was great. It's a 2015, so it's got the newer interior, low mileage, and it was actually used at a prison. So it, it probably didn't see like some heavy abuse, but sure enough, it had a, a rod sticking through the block. So I negotiated down the price to what was reasonable for a car with a blown motor and uh, secured the thing, bought it. And you know, I just, I was thinking, man, this thing, maybe it's under warranty. So I called my buddy over at the Chevy dealer, gave him the VIN. I said, what's the story? Is this, is this thing been flagged? And he looked it up and he said, no, there's, there's really, there's nothing here. It should be under warranty. He's like, why don't you just have it towed here and we'll stick an engine in it. So that's what I did. Shipped it to the Chevy dealer. They confirmed, sure enough, it was under warranty, and uh, and they threw a new long block in it for me for free. So I basically got this car for half price, and you know this is the first time that uh, Ted and Abdul are going to find out that uh, the car was actually under warranty. You know, I I think I've bought enough cars from them that uh, they probably made up for it uh, on the back end, but uh, I definitely uh, I hit it big on this one. So I guess you can say that I stole a cop car. So my 2013 was gray, which was really the color that I wanted. And this 2015 is silver. And at first I wasn't quite sure, but kind of as the as I got the car, started putting the parts on it and stuff, like it, I think it actually works well. I think that white is probably too seen. Like the silver seems like more of like a detective kind of look for it. And that's kind of what I'm after is to look like a police car, like to look like an undercover police car and have people really question like as you go by, like is that a police car or not? I think some people that buy used police cars, they like want to have that feeling of authority. And for me, I just want people to get out of the left lane. And one of the most effective ways to do that is to have what seems to be a police car and just come up the left lane and as you see that in your rearview mirror, get over and get out of my way. So with the, with the new 2015 platform in place, I had to take the blower off the 2013, get that thing put back together, get that sold, which I made a healthy profit on as well because I kind of came in and, and uh, installed that thing as it may be. So the full package on this 2015 is an LSA blower. It's got a Speed Ink Stealth Cam, so it's, uh, it's pretty quiet. I did headers with cats in an X-pipe left the factory mufflers to kind of keep the noise down. We got the Camaro SS and CTSV Brumbo brakes underneath the factory wheels. We went with the Chevy SS springs, which dropped it down three quarters of an inch and have uh, give the car a little better handling. For the exterior, we went with a push bumper up front. Uh, the car's got a CB antenna and scanner antenna on the back. And then one of the holes that was in the trunk, we, I left a stubby UHF antenna. So the car looks, from the outside, looks really official. So as I pass by, like it's almost certain that this car is a cop car. One of the main reasons I wanted to have this car was to test police countermeasures. Now, installing stuff in a former police car is a lot easier than like a Mercedes or an Audi. So I've got a Redenzo RCM radar detector in there, AL Priority laser jammer, my tried and true Uniden 885 police scanner and CB radio that I've had modified. I'm really using the push bumper to kind of mount different uh, countermeasures. Right now, what I'm doing is testing out some different night vision cameras. So it makes it a lot easier to install stuff just on a push bumper out in the open and uh, kind of test things out and tweak and play with my police countermeasures as I like to do. So the pros and cons of having a former police car that's very convincing is on a interstate, it works fantastic. People get absolutely get out of your way if you're coming up the left lane. However, if you're on two lane roads, that you've got the guy going the speed limit, hands 10 and two, and it really kind of slows you up. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. I do a lot of inter interstate driving and that's kind of what I do. Use this as kind of like a family cruiser so we're able to get in, get out, and kind of move along pretty well. Usually I'm a turbo guy. I don't really like superchargers all that much because it takes engine power to make boost and make power, but the low-end torque of this thing is amazing. 
Uh, obviously, Chevy doesn't make any sort of turbocharged version of the LS motor, so I was kind of uh, stuck with a blower. And I will say that while this the top end is not the greatest with a supercharger this car will do a burnout as long as you command it to as long as you're man enough to to keep the pedal down this thing will just burn the tires for a city block now if the police had this super police vehicle that i've created the question is would that ruin it for cannonballers and i would have to say after having this thing on the highway and uh, and and doing some pulls in it I think that uh, some of these German super sedans uh, might have a run for their money.